بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ اسلام علیکم پاکستان سعید حسین حیدر وتھ کارپوریٹ گورننس اگین وی بین لوکنگ ایٹ دی ڈفرینٹ ڈائمینشنالٹیز آف کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی بین لوکنگ ایٹ اٹ اسٹرکچر اینڈ اٹس فریم ورک ناؤ وی گوئنگ ٹو پروسیڈ اینڈ لک ایٹ دی جنرل ایشوز ان کارپوریٹ گورننس سو لیڈیز اینڈ جنرمن وین وی آر لوکنگ ایٹ دی ڈفرینٹ ایشوز آف کارپوریٹ گورننس دین ون آف دی ڈسٹنگوشنگ فیچرز از دا رول آف دا بورڈ اینڈ اٹس مینجمنٹ So, when we look at the role of the board and the management, the constitution of more and more companies stress and underline that the business is to be managed by or under the direction of the board. So, when we are talking about that, and this is a very, very important point, now the ceremonial role of the board has become a relic of the past. Now, we talk about effective uh, and performing boards. We talk about board performance. We talk about how the different members of the board should be constituted, what should be their background, what is their expertise, what is their experience, and how they can substantively and meaningfully contribute to the betterment of the organization through a strategic input by giving a better direction and ensuring that there is more transparency, there is more merit, there is more accountability, there is more cross functionality, and most important, that the best. human resource is hired by that particular organization. So we see that the role of the board has changed and it is not an intrusive uh, context, but it is a more facilitating context. It is a more context of giving more depth to the management and to ensure that there is an oversight also over the management. So, We look at the next point in, and that is the responsibility for managing the business is delegated by the board to the CEO who in turn delegates the responsibility to other senior executives. So what are we seeing? We are basically seeing a three-tiered hierarchy that we have the board on top, we have the chief executive officer with his chief officers and then we have the rest of the management and the senior executives. So with this three-tier top management hierarchy, we ensure that there is more transparency, that there is more accountability, and most importantly, that there is optimization of management and performance. And that is the crux of having an effective board. Going to the next point, the board occupies a key position between the shareholders and the company's management who are the day-to-day -day managers. So what we see is, is that there is this triangulated relationship which is created So we have the board, we have the shareholders, and we have the management as the key stakeholders of any organization, the key internal stakeholders. Naturally, there are dozens of other stakeholders which we are going to be looking at and understanding in the coming sessions, but these three are very critical and vital. And the connection between the management and the shareholders is the board, and the board has to play the role of a big brother. And that is very, very important, which would ensure the better performance and the optimization and also better value practice by different organizations to lead towards an integrity-centric organization, which is one of the key uh, results of good governance and corporate governance in the 21st century. And then, ladies and gentlemen, when we are looking at the composition of the board, and its related issues. The composition of the board of directors refers to the number of directors of different kinds that participate in the work of the board. Now, this is very important, ladies and gentlemen, because when we are talking about the diversity within the board, then we are not only talking about having representation from different sectors or having professionals or experts from different disciplines or different domains, but we are also talking about having a diversity in the board between the different genders and that means that now boards should try to uh, have and include more female directors into boards and secondly also have representation from the minority shareholders. So it should not only be majority shareholder dominated board but there should also be representation from the minority. And then thirdly we look at the different domains and expertise level that there should be an HRM expert, there should be accounting experts. They can be legal experts, they can be, uh, they can be production experts, they can be sector experts or domain experts, they could be IT experts in it 
and they could be human resource management experts. So, they could be different experts within the board to ensure that the efficacy of the board is at a far higher level and it would contribute to the better governance and better performance of the organization at the end of each year. So, like we were mentioning that there is a lot of diversity, so there are also executive directors and non-executive directors. An executive director is one who is an executive of the company and also a member of the board. So, this executive director is participating in the management of the company and also as a member of the board, while a non-executive director has no separate enrollment or employment relationship with the company and therefore, he or she plays an overarching role within the confines of the board of that particular organization and has no direct relationship in its management. So, usually there is one executive director so that there is someone uh, who is a part of the management and also a part of uh, the, uh, the board. Uh, thirdly, there can be independent directors, there can be affiliated directors in the non-executive directors again uh, context. So, this is the diversity which tends to emerge within the board and that also enhances the efficacy and the effectiveness of a board of any organization uh, around the world. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is also very important sometimes to have separation of powers between the chief executive officer and its chairperson. However, in countries like the US and India, we see that there are many organizations in which the CEO and the chairman can be in one particular position, but it tends to compromise the transparency and the accountability of the organization and of the individual and the separation of powers between the different tiers. So, what happens is that we have seen in America especially that there have been huge scandals like the 3 com scandal, uh, like the MCI scandal, like the Enron scandal. There have been so many scandals which have been taking place and one of the main reasons is, is the uh, dovetailing of those two positions and, uh, and doing away uh, with the segregation of the different tiers and the segregation of power, authority and responsibility. And uh, it can lead to unhealthy consequences just like I was mentioning. Now, uh, it is very important that the chairperson removes an important check uh, on senior management activities. So, that uh, is also very uh, important that when we remove the chairman from the role of the CEO, then he or she can start playing a very effective role of ensuring transparency, accountability, integrity and anti-corruption. So, these are very, very important contexts in the domain of corporate governance and are issues of debate because in different countries, there are different configurations, there are different relationships and sometimes we see that they are being dovetailed. So, should board have committees? Well, yes, there should be different committees as you can see over here, we are talking about nomination special committees, remuneration committees, auditing committees, human resource management committees and these committees lessen the burden of the board and enhance uh, its effectiveness. So, again what happens is, is that the board can be bifurcated into different committees and they can also have subcommittees and these committees would have their own chairperson and they would have different members who should be subject specialists in their particular areas and then they would be able to uh, ensure better accountability and transparency. And a very, very important committee is the Human Resource Management Committee, which ensures that there is proper, uh, proper analysis of jobs, there are proper job specifications, there are pragmatic job descriptions, there are proper performance matrices and then there is a proper recruitment and selection process. In the recruitment and selection process, there has to be transparency, there has to be merit and the best person or individual has to be selected without any favoritism, without any nepotism, without any bias, without discrimination. So, that is very important and therefore, the HR committee plays a very, very important role because the HR committee also selects the, the CEO of the organization, the chief operating officer of the organization and all of the other chief officers including all the important positions within the hierarchy and organogram of that particular organization. So, these committees are very, very important. The, the auditing committee is a very important committee because again, the annual audit is very important and they are the ones who are supervising it, they are the ones who are coordinating it and they are the ones who tend to uh, and analyze it and analyze the results and endorse those final results and it becomes a very, very important task for the, for the board as a whole and the auditing committee 
specifically ladies and gentlemen so therefore to ensure the longevity of the board it is very important that the appointment to the board and directors is based upon re-election or election. The shareholders elect directors to the board. However, shareholders are a legion in large organizations and also scattered and hence the practice is expensive and time consuming. So we have a little bit of a paradox that how can we ensure the maximum participation for the election of the board? And sometimes there can be problems also in it because uh, getting all of the shareholders and getting all of the stakeholders together can itself be a very, very a challenging task but it is a very important task to ensure that the best directors are chosen they represent the broader community of stakeholders and shareholders they are diverse and have diverse backgrounds they are capable they themselves are individuals of high integrity and of uh, vast experience and exposure so all of these things become very important in the board the board plays a very very important role Definitely, we usually interface with the management of an organization, but the board at the back end ensures that there is a check and balance on the management, that there is merit, that there is accountability, that there is transparency, that, uh, that decisions uh, will be analyzed and that decisions have to be taken uh, in a structured, non-biased, non-discriminatory uh, approach based upon established frameworks and established value systems within the culture of the organization. So the board is actually, ladies and gentlemen, the custodian of the organization, the mentor of the organization and is the supra body which ensures that the organization runs in the best possible way. Thank you so much.